Hello folks, welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George, this is the Silent Boat Butler. This is a mid-70s Contessa 32 that's with me for a fairly extensive refit. If you've watched this series, you'll know the boat is called Countess Charlotte. I call her Lottie and this is Project Lottie. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the heads because there are going to be some fairly big changes on this boat uh, and we'll come on to that in just a tick. So on these Contessas, there are generally two or two and a half different arrangements, uh, depending on the age of your boat and whether it's been swapped around and changed around. So on the slightly earlier boats like this one, uh, there was a built-in cabinet and a lavac toilet on a plinth, and it's all kind of plywood and veneered or possibly with some sort of laminate over the top of it. Um, that's the early arrangement. On the slightly later boats from about 1977 onwards, there's a GRP liner that is laid up in the factory and placed into the boat when the boat is built. So that has cabinets behind, again, uh, toilet, lavac toilet normally again, sitting on a plinth. That toilet is pushed slightly further outboard than it is on the early boats. And then I said two and a half different arrangements because as the latest generation of boats uh, have got, so the very, very new Contessa 32s, have got a slightly different GRP heads molding. And they've gone back to the early arrangement in that it has a pull-out sink behind the heads, um, it, rather than a built-in sink, and uh, but it's all made out of GRP again, so it's a, a glass fibre moulding. Now, this boat had the very early arrangement, which has the pull-out sink in a drawer um, in the old-fashioned cabinetry, and I've been discussing with the owner what to do with that. Um, it all needed a bit of a repair. It wasn't great. The toilet is a long way out from the side of the boat, so it kind of impinges on the walkway through. So ultimately, we decided that rather than repair what was there, um, Jamie, the owner, um, took a screwdriver and a hammer and a few other tools and removed all of the old heads. So I'm going to be building a new one but this is a golden opportunity to make some changes, some modifications to make it maybe a little bit better, a little bit more suited to how he wants to use the boat. And the first key thing is that we are going to be fitting a holding tank. So down here I have, having done lots of measuring up, this is a Vetus holding tank which I've ordered in, which is going to fit up against the hull behind where the old heads was. So um, the first job on this heads refit is to make up a way of mounting that holding tank uh, such that the hoses can get in the top and all that sort of stuff, uh, but also the hoses can run down to the seacocks which uh, need to be fitted. And so we will look at that next. So I'm going to take you up forward to where the heads was and you can see it is just bare hull now. And looking in here you can see where I have had to cut out and then re-bond in the main bulkhead down that side. It was fine in the middle, but at the top it had all kind of released. In fact, it was um, it was laminated onto this white plastic formica stuff, which unsurprisingly failed. Um, so I've removed the formica and bonded it onto the wooden bulkhead, so that should be all good. Same on that side. That's all been kind of re-glassed in all the way down, so that is super secure. Now, if I find a picture of the heads as it was, I will post it right now so you can see what it looks like. And uh, you'll see that it used to have some shelving units in here. They were glassed into the hull and they effectively weren't just shelves. They were also providing some structure into the boat to stop it from flexing. And on the later boats, which have a GRP moulding in here, and I'll insert a picture if I can find one of what that moulding looks like. Um, because that moulding is there, you need some additional structure in there. So normally the boat has some stringers bonded in down here. Normally three from memory. Oh, you can see down there as well. That's where the old seacocks were. So that's been glassed up inside and out. I did the outside bit when I did the osmosis treatment. Um, so I need to put some stringers back in there, which is going to be easy enough. But I've been holding off doing that because I don't want to fit a stringer and then find out I've put it exactly where I want the holding tank. So kind of want to take a bit more of a holistic view of how that is all going to work. Now this is actually quite tricky to film because I need to put my camera down so I've got my hands free to hold the holding tank. And the plan is to mount this holding tank roughly kind of up there. So you can see, because there's this horrible paint on here, the old cabinets 
came out to there. Now what I want to do with the new cabinets is just push that all back a little bit, kind of four inches or so, so the new cabinet will start roughly on this corner here and then come forward. So I've got a bit of work to do to remove all this horrible blue paint and try and make this look reasonable because it will be on show. But that should give enough space to fit the holding tank here. Now, the other option for fitting the holding tank is to fit it in one of the underberth lockers up in the bow, but that then takes up some locker space there. So um, what we've decided to do is that um, rather than having a load of locker space here, which is what you would normally have on a Contessa, we are going to sacrifice that to have the holding tank here, but free up um, the potential use of one of the other lockers. So, ideally, it probably wants to be upright-ish, I think, and uh, I need enough space to be able to get hoses on and off. Uh, there's gonna be a tank sensor in there as well, so, it's going to want to be somewhere around there, I think. And that is going to give me plenty of space to get my locker front in further outboard. So that will work there. So I need to go and get a marker pen and draw roughly where I think it wants to go. And then I can think about putting some sort of plywood backing board onto the hull that this can be bolted onto. So it has, if I take the plastic off, it has these little notches here as strong points. So I can nut and bolt it onto a piece of plywood and the plywood can be securely bonded onto the hull. So that is, I think, stage one. But I also, I'm gonna take a scraper to this, see if I can clean that up. So at some point I need to decide what I'm going to do with this, whether I recover it with white formica or I think what we're going to do is probably re-veneer it with some teak veneer and then have the unit that goes in being white because I think if it's all wood it might look a bit dark. So um, that is the plan. There we go, I've drawn around this now so it's going to roughly go here, still be able to access the nuts on the back of that forward lower shroud U-bolt. So I can take that down and next I'm going to cut up a piece of plywood that's about the right size. So I've got a piece of 10 mil here left over from doing the bunk tops and um, if I cut out a piece of plywood that's just a little bit bigger then I can work out how I can attach that so that it's vertical or fairly vertical. You've got to remember it's a boat, they do tend to lean over um, but I think it's good from a stationary uh, when the boat's stationary you want it sort of fairly vertical just so that it drains properly. This is what's called a gravity uh, pump system. So the idea is that when you are using it you can switch the seacock off and you'll be able to pump the toilet but you're just pumping your waste into the waste tank and then when you're able to empty it if you're at sea you can just open the seacock and through gravity it will make its way down um, and if you flush the toilet at the same time, it will help force seawater in here and that will force the um, contents out overboard. Or of course, you can attach a deck pump out system. So I'm gonna have to put, um, it's out of shot, but up there somewhere, I'm gonna fit a uh, deck fitting for the manual pump out if it's being pumped out on land, or not on land, but in the marina or wherever the pump out facilities happen to be. Right, let's cut some plywood. Before I cut the plywood, what's good positionally is, because I want that upright from about there, that means that I can fit a stringer in just behind it there, which is great because I wanted one up at the top there to replace the um, shelf that was bonded in up there. So that is gonna work quite nicely. So I can maybe have a, a stringer roughly there if I can find my pen. No, of course I can't. Oh, there we go. I lose so many pens, it's ridiculous. Um, right, so, gonna be a stringer somewhere, probably there, and then I can put another one in, maybe there. Looking at where they are, oh, fact, there we go. That exactly lines up with the stringer that is the other side of this bulkhead. So, 
one up there, which roughly lines up with that one, one there, and then one kind of in there somewhere. And then that will stop any flexing, hopefully. So, well, that's the plan. Let's see if it works. Well, here is my piece of plywood, duly cut out, and it is going to go just about there, I think. So in terms of fitting it, I'm going to put the stringer in first because that stringer is going to sit there behind it. So that will potentially give it something to kind of rest against. Uh, and then I might measure, I might just loosely sort of bond that in place, just bog it in place. Uh, and then I can measure and maybe put a piece of plywood in at the top there. And then I've got something to glass against so I can glass up over the whole thing, make it super super strong. So the one thing I'm also going to have to do is put some sort of captive fixings in the back of this board. So I will get a washer and a nut and um, I might just attach those to the back permanently by just using again a bit of kind of polyester um, paste and maybe a little bit of glass just to um, attach them on the back there where they need to be so that when it comes to fitting the holding tank all I need to do is put the holding tank up into position with the appropriate bolt and washer and screw straight through into the captive nut that's behind there. And that will also make it easy to remove later because there's nothing worse than trying to remove something and you can't get to the nut and what have you. So um, I do try to think about how something is going to come apart again when you put it in. It's not always possible to make it super easy on a boat, but um, you kind of do your best and try and keep half an eye on uh, what may need to happen down the line. But I think the next job is cut some holes in this, make some holes in that for where the nuts need to go, see what fixings I need to buy or find in my box of fixings, um, but more importantly cut up the stringers now that I know where they're going to go. Hmm. Funnily enough all three are going to be roughly the same length. That means the bulkheads are the same distance apart, which is nice to know, because they're not always. Because 1970s boat. I've just cut up the core material for the three stringers that are going in here. It is simply just plywood. So this is a marine plywood. This is Robin's Elite because it's what I had kicking around. It's about 12 or 14 mil, something like that. It's about half inch. Um, it's the same stuff that's used for the stringers around the rest of the boat. But the core material is not the important bit of a stringer because um, all this is really is a former for the glass layup that's going to be going over the top of it. So that's going to go in somewhere around there. It will get bonded to the hull um, kind of like that. And then glass gets laid up down the hull, out over the top of the former, back in, and along the hull again. So it's that glass which is forming a, uh, a structure which is going to resist the flex in the hull when this boat is sailing. So um, you could make the former almost out of anything. On a lot of boats it's made out of foam or something else that can have then the glass laid up over it. Of course on modern boats they tend not to have uh, traditional stringers like this so much. There's quite often a GRP inner moulding um, that gets glassed in um, to the boat or just bonded in to the boat. Um, but my preference from a strength and rigidity point of view is to have traditional kind of bonded in bulkheads and stringers because they tend not to pop off whereas uh, newer build boats um, are much quicker and easier and more efficient to build but they aren't necessarily as strong as doing it the old school way. Anyway, that was an aside. Um, what I'm going to do now, I think, is just to clean up the surfaces here just to make sure they're all super clean. And then I'm going to bond these on. What I'll probably end up having to do is use some masking tape or something like that just to hold it in position whilst that initial bond uh, cures. Well, you can see behind me the three stringers or the string up cores are in place. I'll have to just scroll down a little bit. There we go. You can see the third one is down there. So they have just been kind of glued in place, bogged into place with some polyester um, that has glass mixed into it and um, just kind of held in place while that's cured and now it's achieving its final cure because I can feel it's warming up now because there's some quite thick um, goo behind there. Um, what I don't have here, unfortunately, it's back in the workshop, is any glass. So I'm going to do a trip back there but essentially 
the next step for me is to lay up some glass down the hull there over the board and back down the hull and this kind of step out and step back in is what makes the structure that will stop this from all flexing in use. Once that is in I can then get my board in there for the holding tank to go onto. The final step once that is all done is I'll come in probably with some flow coat something like that and then coat everything because uh, the polyester laminating resin that I'm using leaves a very slightly tacky finish and it's nice it's all flow coated because it all just looks nice and clean and white and it'll be easy for the owner to keep it clean going forward. Here is a better view of those three stringer formers in place and I've been to the workshop and got glass and just cut up what I need. So, um, oh, that's the scraps. So I've got a mixture of combi mat. So this is CSM sewn to this by ax And I've also got a load of CSM cut up there. So I'm gonna have to do the smelly bit now at the end of the day and I'll laminate over all of those, tie them into the hull and then the stringers are done. And then tomorrow I can come back and think about putting that board in that's gonna go there to support the holding tank. Well, it's about half past six and I am done. So there's the bottom one, middle stringer, top stringer. I put a little bit more glass on the bottom stringer because I had some spare glass kind of cut up and if any of them are going to get a pounding, it is kind of that one that's slightly lower down. So I thought a little bit of extra support in there is no bad thing. I'm going to let that all cure up over the next few hours and then come back tomorrow and see about fitting the piece of wood that's going to go in there for the holding tank. It's now the next day and this has all cured nicely. It's slightly sticky to the touch because it's a laminating resin so um, but that's fine because I'm going to be laying up some more glass over the top of this which will then make the sticky bit cure with the new resin and then eventually it'll get all flow coated just to make it nice and easy to clean and look nice. Um, what I've just done off camera is uh, I've put some captive nuts on the back end of this board so that I can fit the holding tank to it. And I've just remarked on here where this board needs to go. And very conveniently, I can kind of put it there, rest it against that stringer, and it is pretty much vertical, which is really convenient. So I've just marked on a couple of screw holes just for temporary holding it, because what I'm gonna do is um, mix up some 
polyester goop just to put in the back here so I can smush it in against this, chuck a couple of screws in just to hold it whilst that cures. But the main thing that's going to be holding it against the side of the boat is I'm going to lay up some glass here at the bottom, over the sides, and I shall almost certainly have to do some at the top as well. Um, so that I've got something to lay up against, I'm going to have to cut a little piece of wood to maybe, maybe go in there, um, just so I can have the glass go up, I'm doing it off camera, there we go, so I can have the glass go up over the top and then up the side of the hull. So when the boat is leaning on, uh, that'd be port tack, uh, then yeah, there's going to be quite a lot of weight potentially if the holding tank was full trying to pull that off the boat. So it needs to be reasonably secure, but um, a bit of glass at the bottom, a bit of glass at the top, a couple of screws which really aren't going to be doing much once it's um, all been bonded on, uh, and that should be it. Well, I thought I'd save you the joy of watching me do more laminating, but there is that piece of wood all glassed in. That's had, I think it was four layers of 600 gram CSM, top and bottom, as well as those couple of screws. But um, the glass will do most of the job. Whilst I was at it, I also put a couple of extra layers on this stringer just here. So um, I only put four on there yesterday and the upper one had a bit more than that and the lower one had a bit more than that when I did it yesterday but I was running low on glass so stuck an extra couple of layers on that so I'm going to let that cure and head off to the workshop and get some flow coat and then when I come back that will have set up enough that I can flow coat the whole area and then I can start thinking about designing the new heads. I've been in the heads here because I've been working on some jobs outside whilst there's been some nice weather but I've got to stage now where I can't remember what I recorded last which is um, one thing so as you can see there is a holding tank in place uh, that's bolted in loosely I can remove that when I need to but what I need to do is come up with a plan for the cabinetry that's going to be going in here and what I'm going to try and do is move everything slightly outboard of where it was previously on this boat to replicate the kind of arrangement that you had in a slightly later Contessa that has a GRP moulded liner in here. So I've just put some uh, white masking tape on the surfaces here so that I can draw on them and I'm going to be using my laser level here to work out roughly where things want to go and then using the tried and tested templating method that I've used before with bits of uh, thin plywood and a hot, glue, hot melt glue gun. I'm going to be sticking bits of thin plywood all over here to template and kind of mock up what I'm trying to make. Once I've done that I will send a picture off to the owner just to say this is kind of what I'm thinking uh, and hopefully it'll be a yeah that's fine or it'll be a mm, not sure could we do something so we shall see but hopefully I can come up with something that's reasonably easy to make, reasonably quick to make, uh, looks nice, gives a little bit more space uh, than what was in here before because um, as I said I'm trying to push it slightly outboard because the earlier arrangement that this boat and other kind of mid 70s and earlier boats had, uh, had the loo kind of protruding out a bit more into the head's walkway if you like um, and uh, just by setting it slightly further outboard just gives a little bit more space to come through from the main cabin back there into the double berth which is kind of out of shot over there. So that is the plan. Well folks I am at this point going to bring this episode to a close. It's because I have recorded far too much material than I can reasonably put into one episode and I want to get an episode out so I think it's better to get half of the rebuild out 
and then you will have to tune in maybe in a week's time to see the second half of how I have gone about building this new heads in this old Contessa. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you want to support the show, there is a link in the description. It's a PayPal link where you can send me uh, five pounds, ten dollars, fifteen yen, whatever you want to send me. It's to buy me a beer or a coffee or three beers as you see fit. Um, thank you very, very much to those that do donate to the show. It makes a massive difference and allows me to buy better microphones and things like that to uh, help produce better content for you. Also, if you haven't already done so, there's a subscribe button. Please click the subscribe button. It tells YouTube that uh, you like my stuff and it pushes it out to more people. Same deal with the thumbs up button, the like button that's down the bottom there. If you click on that as well, I really appreciate it. Again, it's the way YouTube works, the way the algorithm works. The more people that hit like, more people hit subscribe, the more YouTube pushes my videos out to people that have the same kind of profile as you have uh, within uh, the Google YouTube world and it helps grow my channel. So if you do those two things, I really genuinely do appreciate it. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.